Welcome back to Star Trek Nitpickers, everybody. I'm your host, Commander Corbo, and here is your co-host, Lieutenant William. Thanks a lot for joining us, everyone. Welcome back to Star Trek Nitpickers. Today we're talking about the ninth episode from Picard, Et in Arcadia Ego, Part 1. The title translates roughly to, Even in Paradise, There is Death. Arcadia was very far inland, and the people there were known as idyllic shepherds who knew nothing of the troubles of city life near the ports. So the title in this case is a reference to a sort of end of Eden on this utopian android planet, Gullion 4. So the big thing about this episode really is we learn Data's creator, Dr. Soom, had a son. Brent Spiner returns in this episode as Dr. Alton Inigo Soom, Noonien Soom's son. As a nitpicker, I have to wonder how and where he became a doctor without ever being marked down as existing in some way that led to Picard knowing about him. I have to wonder why he kept his existence a secret. It was bad enough in Star Trek V when we found out Spock's got a half-brother we just never knew about. Since then, we found out Spock also had an adopted sister. We also learned in TNG that Worf had a long-lost brother, as did Data, and then Data also finds his long-lost grandpa, and then his mom. I've had enough with long-lost family members suddenly becoming the focus of attention in Star Trek. Dr. Alton Inigo Soong seems like a nice enough guy at first, but then he mentions that his father had him, but he created Data. And he adds that that was a fact his father never let him forget. So it seems like he may have a chip on his shoulder about Data. And then we have to wonder, why didn't he ever reach out to his brother Data? It seems he was aware of his existence. So, G. The other big thing about this episode is it feels like we pretty much have the mystery over and done with for the most part. There could still be a twist in the next episode, but we now know not only what the ancient and horrifying Romulan secret is, but we also know that the Romulans didn't really get the whole message from the ancient alien warning. So they've had the secret wrong for hundreds of years. We meet Sutra in this episode. She's sort of the leader of the android people on the planet Gullion 4. Sutra decides to kill all humans and other organics after she does a mind meld with Agatha Gerardi and is able to decipher the real meaning of the ancient alien warning. It turns out it wasn't a message from organics warning other organics not to create androids. It was a message from androids warning other androids that organics would try to destroy them. Sutra actually guesses the message was really meant for synthetics before she even does the mind meld, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's what happens. Why can an android do a mind meld with a human? Why not? As Dr. Soon Jr. explains, Sutra's always had a keen interest in Vulcan culture. She read a lot of Shurak, and she taught herself the mind meld. The mind meld reveals to Sutra that the Romulans didn't get the full message, and it feels sort of like the Twilight Zone episode where aliens come claiming they want to help the people of Earth and leave behind a book. Part of the title of the book is eventually translated to To Serve Man, reassuring the people of Earth that the aliens are good guys. Eventually, the rest of the title is translated, though, and it turns out... It's a cookbook! <laughs> The Simpsons did a great parody of this for a Halloween episode. You might remember the phrase, how to cook 440 humans. Sutra finds from the mind meld with Girardi that the full message is an offering of help from some sort of super advanced federation of synths, existing beyond the boundaries of time and space, an alliance of synthetic life. The message is from them to other forms of synthetic life that may need help killing all humans. Sutra starts trying to convince Soji they should call the AI Alliance and kill all humans. Soji is sort of undecided. It seems clear Soji will decide to be a good guy and help Picard save the organics in the next and last episode of the season. That's one of the main problems I have with this episode. It's fairly obvious what's going to happen in Part 2. One of my other gripes is the way Dr. Soom Jr. and his somewhat anti-Data sentiment seem to sort of cast a dark shadow over Data's whole existence. It's sort of like saying, guess what, Noonien Soom wasn't the nice guy you thought he was. He was a bad dad who gave his son a hard time about being human or something. So now when I think about all the good times Data had, I'll have to be thinking, yeah, and meanwhile, poor Alton Inigo was out there being an outcast or something feeling like Data was what he always should have been, or something. Also, Alton just sort of comes across as a fool. 
All in all, this episode worked fairly well, though, I gotta say. It was reminiscent of the original series when they get to Soji's planet in the beginning. I liked this episode a lot, but there were some things that felt wonky. This season is working much better than any season of Discovery so far in terms of telling one big story in episodic chapters, though. Discovery gets the overarching story jumbled in both seasons, whereas this is pretty easy to follow in comparison and more entertaining. It will be interesting to see if there is any direct connection between this federation of synths that exist outside time and space and the mysterious time-traveling AI that took over Control and others in Discovery last season. Let me know what you think is going to happen or just what you think about all of this in the comments below. Thanks for watching and subscribing, all of you new and old subscribers. Remember, you could probably cheer someone up by sharing this video with them. That's true. Be safe, everybody. Live long and prosper.